Okay, guys, we're gonna continue ranking every single movie I watched in January 2021. Um, in 28th place is John Wick. John Wick is a great action film, great, you know, comeback for Keanu Reeves, who's had a, you know, a dud of a couple of years at, coming out for the 90s. And the, 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 directi- the directing and the choreography of the action is great, and it has a substance of a plot where it's not, it's, yes, it's straight up action when the action and the script. You know, all that stuff is the greatest part about this movie, but you kind of, you learn about the character, and the hook of the of killing the dog makes you more invested in, in, in giving you a pass for all the killing John Wick does, and so it's just a fun, fun action movie. Coming in 27th place is Hook, a great Steven C. Spielberg film, and it just opens your imagination in the world-building of Wonderland, and I think it takes, what I love about this movie the best, is it takes this world it takes these characters that we know so well and puts a twist on it you know um uh peter pan's you know an old man or not old man but an old older man has kids wendy's really old and it's about you know keeping your childlike innocence and you know through a great story great directing by steven spielberg great performances by two iconic actors and you know, it has a great supporting cast to go along with it, so I really like Hook. Um, I, I don't have any big complaints. I don't think it was the best Steven Spielberg directed film. I think it could have been directed a little bit more, and some of the effects don't fully hold up. Twenty coming in twenty sixth place is Anchorman two. Not as funny as the original, but it's hilarious. I watched the the super sized version, and like the songs that they added in the super sized version were hilarious. But there were just so many funny standout moments. These, these jokes that are just working are awkward at times and, you know, very crass at times, but just so funny. Anchorman 2 is hilarious. You know, another hilarious film. With, again, that fight scene, the whole fight scene, the whole park fight scene, that was even hilarious. I contend it's better than the first fight scene because it's more over the top, and this film doesn't take it too seriously, and it's very, very funny. Coming in 25th place is Reservoir Dogs. The film that put Quentin Tarantino on the map is still a great one, with a great cast and a story that keeps reeling you in and reeling you in because of the great writing of Quentin. This film is a is a is a Quentin Tarantino screenplay vehicle. You know, it's not a you know it's not a film that has the greatest directing, not the f- film that has the greatest performances. It's about the writing, about these these the story and these characters and this this plot that is told out of order but is so fascinating at the same time that's what this movie is at its best it just great it almost feels like this film reservoir dogs almost feels like a play that it's really one setting and it's about the right it's about the writing it's about the characters it's not about the flashy story it's not about the flashy moments it's about it's about the writing and the story and the character and that's you know, what the strongest parts of this movie Coming in 24th place is When Harry Met Sally, a great romantic film that it just builds up and it builds up and it, the tension builds and builds that when they all finally come together, it just feels so satisfying. The best romantic films are the most satisfying ones because you see them grow throughout the film. What better way of growth than to see them grow over 12 years? And I think this movie is is not that long, and it moves at such a quick pace where it shows key scene after key scene. It's hilarious and funny and fun, so I really like that movie. Coming in 23rd place is The Client. I, again, another great courtroom thriller. Like, what I love about it is it's not just one thing. It's not just a legal drama. It's not just a courtroom drama or a courtroom thriller or a legal thriller or whatever. But it's more than that. You know, there's, there's adventure in a way. There's you know action and crime and it has a little bit of everything that you would expect from a film like this that has a great cast oscar nominated performances and the story that you just want to see and, and there's real tension to it that you see these villains as real threats these antagonists as real threats that you as the film progresses you're like whoa oh my god oh my god oh my god and just the progression of the story through and through makes it a film that I really, really enjoyed watching a couple weeks ago. Coming in 22nd place is The Grand Torino. Qu- Qu- uh, I was going to say, uh, 
a Clint Eastwood directed and starring film that while it is not as good as Million Dollar Baby that you'll see higher up on this list, it is still a great movie. I think what I like about it is just seeing the growth of this character. It's about this, truly about this one character. As he grows from being an old hermit to growing to feel compassion and empathy and love for his family and for his neighbors that you see he he having a tough time getting over his racism for the war and it asks i think what i think the, i always say this but it's true the greatest movies don't ask what they ask why you know the what is obvious what he's racist he's mean but it's the why the great movies ask the why. A film like Joker is not, yeah, what Joker is doing is mean and mean and that, that's facts and whatever. But it's the why Joker is the way he is. And that's similar to this movie. Why is he racist? Why is he mean? You see that throughout this movie, but also you see him grow and change from that. Where he doesn't start out as the most likable character, but that yet to the end you're rooting for him as he's putting his life on the line for his neighbors, and it's that character growth of the film that makes it as good as it is. Coming in 21st place is Hugo. I just think this was just a fun film, directed by Martin Scorsese, and taking a story that celebrates movies, celebrates the early days of movies, and directing by what is one of the greatest modern-day directors who knows film, knows filmmaking, that, that I think I learned, I honestly learned a lot of film in the early days and the technology of film in the early days while telling a great story throughout. You learn, you love, you care, greatly directed and screenplay, and it has a great cast, great supporting cast, you know, beyond, you know, what, beyond, you know, just our main characters. And it's funny, it's quirky, and I overall think it was a really good film. And now we're moving in into the top 20 with Kill Bill Volume 1. Yeah, this was the one that really got me in the Kill Bill franchise because it had everything. It had the the uh, martial arts. It had the the humor. It had the great Quentin Tarantino writing that I just talked about with the Reservoir Dogs. Just jam jam packed in this movie that I can really appreciate and really love. Coming in nineteenth place is the Hurt Locker. The Hurt Locker was just a great realistic depiction of war, showing what war can do to a person, showing what war can do to someone that's that's not even the nicest person to begin with, and showing day-to-days, the day-to-day routine of a war in modern day. See, that's the thing. We see a lot of Vietnam War films, or a lot of World War One or World War Two war films. We see a lot of World War Two war films and Vietnam War films. In World War One, you know, war films and, and you know all this stuff, it's Civil War, you know, war films, but it's 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 a fresh, it's a breath of fresh air to see a depiction of war in modern day as a war is going on. This film came out ten years ago, you know, you know the height of these wars, and it's it's depiction of war right now with with the modern technology, with you know modern advancements in the modern world we live in today, and I think showing a day the day-to-days of what these selfless heroes do, but also, you know, learning deeper than, oh, you know, congratulations, you served in the military. It's it's going deeper into the characters while you see the day-to-day of what they do. Coming in 18th place is Always Be My Maybe. Yeah, this was just another, you know, funny, fun, romantic movie that, as it goes on, you just see it and you see it and yes I knew that Keanu Reeves was going to be in the movie before watching it that would have been a great twist but you know I knew it happened and, and he was great in it it was just so funny funny fun it, it was just such a quirky awesome movie coming in 16th place it was 16 18, sorry 17th place is the disaster artist the behind the scenes of one of the most infamous movies of all time, The Room, and showing behind scenes and showing Tommy and Mark's relationship, or was it Mark? No, that's the character's name. Was that the real guy's name? Oh, God, now I kind of forgot. 
Greg, Greg, Greg. You know, um, seeing Greg and Tommy's relationship as they make the movie, and it's heartfelt, and it's sad at times, and it's emotional, you feel bad for him, while being outright hilarious. And I love, you know, you see the behind, I love movies, so it's like seeing a funny behind-the-scenes movie, a movie about movies that is hilarious, while being greatly well-made. Nothing, you know, very few things are better than that. But uh, as you see in the list, some things are. Coming in 16th place is Goodfellas. The scope and scale of this movie is just um, wows me. The, the way that they tell a story that spans 30 years or, or you know, 20 years or whatever is just great. And it and it's, moves at a quick pace where it shows each scene that is necessary. And it's, and it's dark, and yes, it's violent, but also at the, the core of it is these core characters that are played by great actors, because you see the rise and fall. Again, like I see a lot of these types of movies, and, and this one included, is at the core of it the rise and fall of these types of people, the way that they operate, the day-to-days of these types of people, the year-to-years, the decades-to-decades of these mob people, where... While I think the Godfather movies are better than these movies, you know, not what I mean, the Godfather movies, I mean one and two, but even them are composed of a couple years, a couple weeks, a couple months. This film chronicles the life of this, 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 you know, um, gangster over the course of not just one year, not just a couple months, not just ten years, over the course of decades. And his relationship to different people that enter and exit his life at different times. And again, another film directed by Martin Scorsese in a great, great way. Coming in 15th place is The Mask of the Phantasm. Never before have I seen a greater depiction of Batman and what his past does to him. And truly seeing the oath he made to his parents. And he str- the genuine human struggle of Batman. Not just Batman as the crime fighter. Not just Bruce Wayne as the billionaire playboy philanthropist. No, see, Batman and Bruce struggle to be which one am I. And blurring the lines between what is the mask and what is the... Fa- or, sorry, what is the facade and what is reality. Really, it blurs the line because you see how the past, Bruce Wayne... Bruce Wayne, that is the mask. Bruce Wayne's past affecting Batman's future. Where the past for the facade affects the future of who he really is. And it just is a great humanistic depiction of a struggle of a man that just so happens to be Batman. It's like a great story and a great tale that... Yeah, I knew going into the twist ending, but maybe you might not even have told, known that going in because they they do it in a way where it's like you think that maybe they're going that direction, but they keep it off. So it's a great story regardless, but having it be a Batman story only adds to it. Coming in 14th place is Fargo, the 1996 movie. Yeah, Fargo was really, really um not fun, but it was it was just a good story. It was, it was kind of taking a weird premise of, you know, the husband wanting to frame the wife's kidnap to, um, to make money is an, is an interesting concept and how it backfires and how the robbers are weird and the police and just as the story gets a, develops and develops and each layer gets added and each little, I guess what's the word I'm looking for? Each little detail of gets figured out and, and the stakes rise and rise and the case gets closer and closer to being solved while you see the different, you know, seeing the, the, the compare and contrast of three different groups, the group of the wife and the kidnappers, the group of the police, and then ultimately the guy who framed it all and started it up. And seeing their, their relationship, you know, as, as the story progresses is very fascinating, so I really did enjoy the movie. Coming in... 13th place is The Notebook. Again, another great romance film. You know, the, the, um, the way that these characters are such great, these actors, I should say, have great chemistry, and you've seen this olden time, and you see the, the flashbacks of what life used to be and what it is, and 
I mean, yes, the reveal that, oh, these old people are actually the people in the story, and that was pretty obvious. I mean, it's called The Notebook, but yeah, it was just... It was just satisfying to see these two people who have great chemistry that are meant to be together finally come together. And I, 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 what's the line? Um, it's like, why did we end it? Or something like that. And he's just like, the boy's like, it's not over. It's not over or whatever. And then they come together and rain and some great scenes, some great script. And overall, great romantic movie. Coming in 12th place is Steve Jobs, the movie about, you guessed it, Steve Jobs is fantastic. The writing of Aaron Sorkin is great. The quippy dialogue, the deep, the potential to detail um, Sorkin has in, the, in these, his scripts are just great, and that's no exception, and it's funny, too. Like, it's surprisingly humorous. I don't know if Steve Jobs is humorous at real life, in real life, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. But he, he was definitely hum like not not humorous in real life, but like sarcastic and all that stuff and, and just in general. Um, but you see kind of this antagonist in um, Steve Jobs, but he grows and he changes to finally love his daughter. Like at the beginning, he's like, "She's not my daughter," even though that's so obvious that she is. So from that. So at the end of the movie, you know, accepting that he's your daughter, accepting that he loves her, and it's this full circle of the human side. You, it's not about, it's not about Steve find, founding Apple and making the the Mac. It's about his struggle as a human being to balance personal life with business, with public life. You know, because he's he has to mix what he's doing business-wise, what he's doing personally, and what the public views him with these great support, like the, the supporting cast is on and on, whether you talk about Kate Winslet and Seth, Seth Rogen and th th that, and, and, and it just goes on and on of great actors that honestly you wouldn't expect to even fit this type of role, and it's just, it's great, I really, really enjoyed it, um, Coming in 11th place is the girl with the dragon tattoo, the American version by David Fincher. And again, Fincher at Per Normal has this, sets this tone from beginning of this movie, this dark, creepy, but yet mysterious vibe set throughout this movie in a gripping, gripping story that you just want to know. You want to know these answers because of these events they, they set in place at the beginning. And as they evolve and change and grow, as more information grows and misleading information, and it's just a, it's just a who done it with the classic David Fincher twist, you know? Because you go back to Seven and you go back to Fight Club and you go back, you know, even recently with Gone Girl and you know all these different movies and, and all this stuff. David Fincher has a twist, you know, social even the Social Network. Um, has a somewhat of a, I mean, the twist, I don't know, would you consider there to be a twist in the social network? I don't know. But yeah, I think it just, uh, it plays into it all very nicely, and it has a great cast, too, I think, honestly. And, um, yeah, it was just so exhilarating to watch, and the thriller tenseness, while it can be mystery and a drama and a, and a, thriller all at the same time it works because the david fincher sets a tone that allows all these different identities to fit into one identity that is this movie um where you care for the story you care for these characters you care for this you know growing relationship but so overall really really liked the girl with the dragon tattoo um I'm going to save the top 10 for its own list, so stay tuned for that. Um, anyways, more videos will come right at you.